tag stop first, and then we'll just play tag after that. <laughs> so, um, Coach, uh, you know, throughout our conference play, uh, you know, just how much, you know, of kind of the rest of the conference you get to watch, you make a point of watching other years kind of catch what you can catch and, and come from there. Or no, I'm, no, I follow everybody, try to watch anytime there's a game on, try to see it live, or sometimes you look at a little bit of tape of, of uh, uh, teams in the league and you definitely follow stats and, you know, articles and stuff like that, without a doubt. I try to watch it as much as I can because, you know, you, you root for your your fellow coaches in the A-10, and you, but you also, you know, you want to watch their teams and see uh, new faces, uh, players that have improved and what people are doing. What do you think, I was going to say, how much deeper is the conference the same point for your job? Oh, it's a, it's a lot deeper. I mean, a lot of... A lot of uh, people, kid, players were sitting out, uh, you know, a, a year older, a year bigger, a year more mature, a year playing in the system. It makes everybody better individually and as a team, and, and I think you're seeing that in the A-10. Kind of off that, uh, what, are you, what is the biggest attribute you think has been behind the league being someone better because so many teams have so many experienced pieces back? Or what do you say is like the biggest factor of why so many teams have played better this year? Well, I think some of the newer coaches in the league have established their identity and they're playing better and getting better results than you know their first year is usually what happens um i think some some players have had some breakout years some really good players in the league that have new roles or new leadership roles and i just think just more teams in our league have depth you know better depth not just depth but but talented players uh uh, multiple talented players on on a lot of different teams in the A10, and you're seeing that. What is this? Oh, sorry. <laughs> you guys want to just tan them? I'll stop. <laughs> you guys came in preseason, nationally ranked, preseason favorite to win the conference. As you go into conference play now, how do you think your guys kind of handled maybe having that bull side being nationally ranked and the preseason favorite uh, throughout your non-conference schedule? Yeah, well, you know, we're we're ten and three. Last year, at this point, we're nine and four. So, um, statistically, you know, uh, wins and losses better. Um, but I, you know, I, I, our guys think they can play better. I think we can play better. I think we can play better consistently for a longer stretch of uh, of time. Um, and I think we got to play better late in games with an experienced group. Um, and you know. It, if you go down the list, you know, we're an older team, but it doesn't mean you're always a mature team. And we got to really mature throughout this A-10. And let's get better. This time last year, you know, when we started A-10 play and we moved forward, we got better. And, uh, you know, that's, that's our goal. Let's continue to work really hard in practice to get better in A-10 play. So I think we're a pretty good team now, but let's be a really, really good team as the A-10 play goes on. Kind of off that, what do you say is the biggest single most important factor or thing, uh, you know, attribute to you guys have success in A-10 this year? Uh, play loose, don't play frustrated. That's simple. I think we're at our best when we're aggressive, we're confident, we're loose. Um, our guys want to win so bad, led by our, our seniors, and that's awesome because one of our greatest strengths is our competitiveness. But also, you got to have a balance, and uh, we can't play frustrated or tight because we want it so bad. We just got to go, sort of, let our hair down and and uh, go play basketball that we we love to do, and that's why we're here. And uh, not forget that. Last year, obviously, you know, you guys um, kind of hit out of gear in A10 play um, because you guys played a little bit more efficiently offensively, uh, shot the ball a little bit better. Um, what this year could allow you guys to hit out of gear? What's that missing thing that maybe? Help you guys play even, even that one better. Yeah, when, when you make more shots, you know, that always helps. And that's what you saw last year. And, and I think we're shooting the ball decently this year compared to our stats last year at this point. Um, but turnovers, um, we just can't turn the ball over. I, I thought in A-10 play last year, we cut our turnovers down, and that was huge. We got to make sure uh, we take good shots, and we got to make sure that we don't turn the ball over. I, I think that's very important. We got a defensive rebound better. Well, Coach Neubauer does a great job, and when I say that, you know, he's had a, he's had some defections, he's had some injuries, um, but their guys compete. And, you know, they definitely could shoot it from three, so they can stay in games or find a way to beat you. And you know, he he's not afraid to take chances with his team to find a way to stay in the game or win the game. And uh, he's done that to us 
over the years, even when I wasn't here, found diff find different ways to play to to try to beat you. And uh, so we got to be prepared for a lot of different things. So when you prepare in A-10, you, you get a little fired up to start. You want to get off to a great start in A-10, but you also got to respect your opponent, and we sure do in Fordham. Yeah. Um, can you expand upon, you know, there I guess some points in games or maybe at practices where you were, you're thinking to yourself, okay, this is where we have to be. We've got to be a little better, a little more mentally tougher in specific aspects. Yeah. Um, when when something doesn't, a, a, a bad foul or you turn the ball over or a play that doesn't go your way or you make a good pass and your teammate bobbles it, uh, it's how you react is a level of your mental toughness. Um, it's not uh, when, when somebody's talking trash to you, mentally tough is not tra talking trash better. Back, mentally, mentally tough is going back to get another stop or score on them again. Um, I, I think more reaction adversity shows mental toughness than anything. And, and uh, I, I think at times when that is really high for us as a collective team, we're really good. But I think that has at times hurt us, and that's where it goes back to being frustrated when things aren't going our way and, and being sensitive that things aren't going our way. And, you know, the biggest thing that I say, we're not the victims. we got to be the fighters no matter what happens, and that's mental toughness. Um, you know, too many, too many times in our society we always want to make excuses and then I'm always the victim when things don't go our way. And sometimes, you know, you just didn't do it well enough. You didn't do it uh, at, at a level you need to do for success. And I want our guys to fight through everything. Number one, it's going to make us uh, tougher people in the real world, uh, but it's going to help us win basketball games. And then it's going to also help you enjoy what you're becoming as a basketball player. So that, that's number one on my list for the rest of the year, is to make sure we're not victims of whatever happens, that we're fighters, and uh, that that personality takes over who we become. And, and you know, the biggest thing to me is when, you got 18 to 22, 23, 24 year olds. Um, we learn a lot of things different ways, uh, but I don't want us to be sensitive to things that don't go our way. I want us to be tougher, and that's emotionally tougher, mentally tougher. And of course, you know, when you have those, you become physically tougher because you don't pout and you're not sensitive to, to uh, things that don't go your way. So, you know, that's number one on our list. We don't play frustrated, we're mentally tougher. We're going to be a better team, and we're going to have guys making better individual plays as well. well what have you seen? Uh, what has made Fordham better defensively this year? They're in a top 20 scoring defense. What, what has kind of sparked that jump? Well, number one, Jeff always has his guys playing defense, but they switch up their defenses so they catch you off guard for two or three possessions here, two or three possessions there. That starts adding up because they play at a slow pace. Um, one of the slowest in the country, so there's not a lot of possessions in the game. And I think he does a good job where a lot of coaches try to catch you off guard so they can score. He, he catches you off guard to, you know, maybe catch three, four, five, six possessions in that game of not sure what you're playing against, what type of defense he's playing. And uh, so we got prepared for that. Let's not waste any offensive possessions, even if they're changing their defenses. So I think he does that. I think their guys are, are pretty strong. Uh, physically on the ball, so they you know they they get up in you at times, and then they also drop back in a zone, so they mess with you. But they're also physical enough to stop you at times, and and then they've done a decent job of uh, you know one and done defense, uh, getting rebounds, so they don't have to stay on defense the whole time. Um, you mentioned uh, you know kind of not players. You're rooting for you know, the other coaches in the league. Um, how, how much of a good thing do you look at the league being stronger? You know, just from your perspective, like you know possibly being to help, help your own net. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, what, what, yeah, well, absolutely. Cause, you know, we schedule non-conference to prepare us for the league and, and to get in the NCAA tournament. So when then, you, then, then you get in your league and you're going to play some great teams on their court or even at home that are, if you do beat them, are very impressive wins to a lot of people in the country. That's great. That's why, you play in the, that's why you're in the A-10. That's why you play in a really good basketball league. That's the fun of it. Um, there's going to be – there's a lot of really good games out there for us. Um, and of course, as everybody knows how hard it is to go win on the road, and that's that's fun. That's where you can really find out a lot about your team. So, league play in the A10 this year is going to be brutal, uh, but what a, what's a, you know what a great opportunity for our team. And uh, you know we've done it in the past, gone gone on the road, 
defended our home court, but you got to do it again, and, and even with a better league, which is which is what, why we're all here. I was curious this year, and I feel like last year we talked a lot about sort of the leadership triumph for the SU Point of Power with Marcus Evans, uh, Isaac, and Darionte. What has the leadership been this year? Has it sort of been those three guys still, or have you seen some younger guys emerge as, as other leaders? Yeah, Marcus Santos Silva has definitely emerged. His talk is, is the best on the team, his communication on the court offensive and defensively, and then when you're playing as well as him and as hard as him, he, your teammates, your peers respect that, so they listen. Uh, but I think his Marcus's leadership is an exa by example and by his talk on the court that really helps his teammates. The guys really respect that. I was going to touch on Silva. I mean, I know you like to you like to shoot the three and, and hit the outside shot, but is it safe to say his play inside? Could be the difference with you guys. Yeah, well, the one thing about the threes, the, the reason guys are getting open threes is because of Marcus Santos Silva. You know, the last few games, nobody's played them straight up because they can't. So they're they're collapsing. There are already two or three guys in the in the lane as we're trying to throw him the ball. That's great respect that he's earning, and he, he's earned it the right way by, the, by his play on the court. But it's helping his teammates get wide open shots. The other thing Marcus Santos Silva does is, um, you know, he – just like any player, he's trying to make plays, but he gets he gets the teammates the ball too, and his inside outside passing has really helped some guys' uh, shooting percentages without a doubt. So now we got to find ways to, you know, he kept, he does things on the move already, which really helps him. We got to do a little bit more, and get him touches, but also uh, not stand around and just try to beg because we're at our best when we're moving and we have great spacing and he can come inside and outside. He showed his versatility like that and get him in ball screens and, and random handoffs, it really puts a lot of pressure on the defense different ways. But he's played phenomenal all year long, but it's how hard he works. It's his discipline and his approach. And when he's cleaning the glass and he's finishing around the rim and, he, and he's talking like he is, I mean, we're just so much a better better team and harder to guard. It seems like his footwork has gone, has been incredibly yeah. better since he came here. Well, he's, he's worked on that yeah. when nobody else is watching. You know, Marcus Santos has improved so much, not because everybody's watching, because nobody's around when he's working that hard. And it's a, it's a huge compliment to him. And, and I told him the other day how much I appreciate his effort and him showing the younger guys how to do things the right way. All right, guys. Appreciate it.